Gibson Drive, the 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to well, thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing TV. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in our NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
I was getting a little bit discouraged and down on myself, and that meant a lot to me to have those guys come in and say, don't you dare get discouraged and, you know, give me some pointers and tell me I could follow them in practice. And and um, it was fun. I, I had a lot of fun on Saturday. I just wish we wouldn't have been involved in those accidents. Well, I, I had spread a little bit of word for some of the people if they had a chance to give you a hand if they could. So, Say so that again? I said I did spread the word out to a few people to, if anybody could, give you a hand. If I, So hopefully those were the guys that wound up getting the message. Yeah, they did. Um, you know, everybody up there at Langley was really helpful from, you know, track owner to the promoter, everybody. I mean, they were absolutely phenomenal with, you know, making sure that we were comfortable. And I was glad that to finally get up there. I know that I committed a couple times and, um, you know, just to due to unfortunate circumstance, we couldn't make it. So it was good to finally get up there, and hopefully we can get back there at the end of the year. And Langley's one of those places that, I mean, I've been racing there for years, and it's just as far as that comfort level on a racetrack, it, no matter how good the car is, it always seems that there's at least one spot on that racetrack that it just doesn't feel right. Exactly. And, you know, there was different points on the track where I struggled. A lot of people said that they struggled coming off a of turn two, and everybody goes, CE can get all of his tires down there. So if you can do that, that's the, I mean, CE wins there almost every weekend. That's the fast way to get around. And, you know, it was, it was so much finesse coming off the corner. And it took so much of me communicating with my team to figure out what the car needed. And I, I was, you know, you know, I've only been doing this for two years. So I was, I was trying to my best, but I was confused as to how the, the car. And eventually, as we worked through it, we got better. And coming off a of turn two was, you know, we perfected that and to get low like CE did. Not maybe not quite as low as he did, but I used that that rim to kind of help my car turn and be able to accelerate off of turn two. So it's a tricky place, but I hope I get to go back because I think I would do a lot better, you know. Well, and and the thing with that, it's it's almost it's, it's similar to a dirt track in a sense with that with that uh, the apron is it doesn't necessarily work the same way throughout the day. I know if you, if you try it early in practice, it usually just seems to upset the car, but later on the night, it, it, it tends to turn into the hot lane. Exactly. Like I said, I go, this is like a dry, dry, slick dirt track is what I told everybody because you have to use, I mean, you have to use finesse getting into the corner. Like our very last practice we went out, I came in and I go, I got it. Like I was so excited because <laughs> I mean, I, I literally got it. I'm like, I got it. I figured it out. I mean, I was so excited cause our last time. I got so much better and more consistent. I was using too much brake coming into turn turn one, and of course I can, you know, time trials that went out the window. But it, it, well, and it's it's odd because I and you talk about time trials other because I've had time trials at that track where you know I come in and I'm sorry guys I, I, I blew it and they're like well you're on the pole and then uh, you know other nights I come in and it's like yeah that nailed it where are you ninth <laughs> yeah I mean I, I knew I blew it I completely drove in way too hard on turn one and was hoping it would stick and it didn't and then hopefully my tires are going to come in again I just drove in too straight and it was completely my fault but you know it. And like I told myself after that accident, you know, that... Well, from what I saw at a wreck, it looked like you were more or less a victim to it. It looked yeah. like everybody kind of stacked up down there, and you were up on the outside, I think, and, and it just... I just... They just, well, they just swept you up there. or No, actually down the bottom, you just got caught in a freight train, I think, weren't you? Yeah, I had nowhere to go, and it was coming into turn three, and I could see it happening, and I was kind of making a, a, a move at the same time, so, and it's like I couldn't... I couldn't do anything, and the cars in front of me just started piling up, and the only thing I could do was hit the brakes, and I actually got airborne. So I thought my car was going to be a lot worse off than it was. And then, you know, in the second race, um, you know, they told me I had to get back out there in order to qualify for, for a position. I had to run at least 50 laps the first race, so the guys worked their tails off, and we got back out there, and I was just kind of making laps. And then um, second race, we were doing really good. We were following Eddie Johnson to the front, I actually, I'd like to see a video of that race because I don't know how you crash on the straightaway. Somehow, well, there's no real straightaway in Langley, which makes the wrecks really hard to avoid. <laughs> it was so crazy. Like, all of a sudden, the guy in front of Eddie spins, and Eddie's going, and I had no, nowhere to go again. Cause I, was, I mean, it was like bumper to bumper. I mean, I was pushing Eddie down the straightaway. And, I mean, it was just like, oh, where did this guy come from? And I hit my brakes, and we broke the tire out again, and... <laughs> back in and fixed it. I mean, and we were passing cars, and we were doing really well in the second feature. It's just unfortunate that we had those, you know, unavoidable accidents in front of us, but I blame myself because if I would have qualified better, I would have been, been more in the front, so. 
So what what actually broke in the right front? A tie rod. Tie rod. Um, now. Right. What? Both races. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to, I noticed that, uh, and one of the things that probably would have helped is that coming off of four, you try to get that left side on that little bit of concrete surface that's there coming into pit road is what a lot of people try to snag to get some good, to get a good uh, run off of four. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, as much as my car was, I was trying to use that to my advantage and it definitely helped with uh, getting the car to rotate and be able to really accelerate the car, you know, straight off the corner. That, I mean, it's little things like that that CE really helped me with on Thursday and, and um, I mean, I, I think that's great, you know, for another driver to help somebody else out. I mean, it's their competition. I mean, CE, I, CE and I have raced door to door really, really hard. I mean, at South Boston, and, and I don't think we've ever raced each other at Bonneville. We've definitely South Boston a couple times. And, you know, we've had our fair shares of bumping and banging and, you know, spinning here and there. But, I mean, it's cool that there's no hard feelings and that we can still remain friends off the track and he's willing to help me on the track. And it, I think it makes it more fun to him because then it's like I learn and then I can be up there battling with them. And, you know, I, I, I really respect guys like that that will do that for me. Now, did, did you uh, catch out your rearview mirror, the, the crash right behind you at one time when you were pulling on pit road? No, I did not. I heard about it. All of a sudden, Peyton came on the radio, and he goes, he goes, that was not your fault. And I was like, what? That wasn't my fault. I, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, I, I admit, I had no clue what went on. And he goes, the guy behind you, for some reason, decided to slam on the brakes and Swerved towards you. I don't remember quite what it was. I, I I could totally be wrong. Something like, where he swerved up to avoid you, and I was like, I was on, I was on the thing. I was on pit road. I'm like, I already put my hand up. I'm like, he didn't need to get out of the way. I wasn't in the way. And and Peyton's like, yeah, it was wasn't your fault. Wasn't your fault. I was like, okay. I was like, well, what happened? Well, what what happened was that when you were when you were on the emergency lane to pull on pit road. Too many of the drivers get comfortable using that emergency lane. <laughs> Just going to say that, Robbie. To get exactly. the little bit more, less distance to have to travel and trying to get a little more bite off that new asphalt. And what happened was somebody was on that lane and you were there turning in and the spotter didn't tell them. So they had to hit the brakes and jump to the right to keep from hitting you. And that's what caused the accident behind you. Well, I don't know how it, I mean, I had my hand up. I committed down the back straightaway, so I don't. It's just, it's just one of those unfortunate things. I hated to see that happen to Philip and, and the guy behind me, too. I mean, right. never like to see anybody else crash because the more right. cars out there, the better the race is for the fans. But I guess it, it happens. And, I mean, I was told when my father wasn't my fault, so I'm, I'm going with Peyton. Well, no, it's I mean, that's that's not your fault. I mean, that apron was put there. It's supposed to be an acceleration, deceleration lane, and it's become the racetrack. And, you know, I had, a, a, you know, an incident that didn't work out as bad as, as yeah. the guy that was behind you where, you know, had a car trying to get onto the apron and get out of the way, and I thought he was racing, you know. So I'm back there, you know, I gave him a bang, and then he gave me the shake of the hand, and I was like, oh, he's he's not on the racetrack. It's hard to hard to decipher who's doing what there. <laughs> yeah. But, well, you know, then maybe I'll know better next time. Maybe just, I, I, I guess I really don't know what I would have done different, but, you know, just maybe have to, you know, really really slow down down the back straightaway i i don't know and and but i had plenty of time before the leaders were coming so it's just it's one of those things but it's so, we're done with now time to move on <laughs> well i i got a question for you because you mentioned motor mile i'm headed to motor mile this week for my my, my first event at motor mile never been there can you well, give give me a couple of tips momentum motor mile is a huge huge momentum track like a lot of these places you really need to slow down in the corner and you know get the car turned and then go off but it is about keeping your speed up and momentum, momentum, momentum. It's my first time I went there. It was really tricky. It, 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 you, the line that you think you should drive is not the line you should drive. It's really weird. And why? Why is that? Is it a, an odd apex, or is it uh, uh, variable banking, or progressive banking, or? It's got a substantial amount of banking, and the way the way that the car, if you drive in and you think you have the right line, like just kind of following the banking a little bit but you actually need to be a little bit lower on the track. You actually use the um, like the curb a lot at Motor Mile. Okay. You need, really need to let it drift, drift up towards the wall, and you make a big swooping, swooping turn in, especially in the turn three. Yeah. It's been a year, so bear with me. <laughs> I've been there, but 
I it's really all right, like you've been there. I saw a picture. That's it. You know, so I, when you run a motor mile, <laughs> we're going to Motor Mile Saturdays, uh, Rolling Thunder 1500 to win race. And seeing how well we're doing in the point standings at Langley, we figure we should probably pursue other ventures where they're paying. <laughs> uh, motor Mile is a great track. I cannot. We're going there in September, September 11th, I think. So we're going there 10th, something like that. And I'm really excited to get back because we, um, our second time there last year, we qualified 11th and was battling, you know, second, third win right at the end and fortunately had a uh, somebody dive bomb me and ruined my first would have been my first podium finish last year I won't mention names <laughs> <laughs> but he knows who's talk who you're talking about right <laughs> I know yeah he, he now he doesn't run a self boss anymore he runs a motor mile all the time now but well we won't mention names I might still be a little bit bitter about that one <laughs> <laughs> typical driver never forgets very fun track and and, um, I mean, last year we raced side-by-side side with Justin Johnson for 40 laps. And him and I, after that, had a whole new respect for one another. And we had a great time. It was so fun. And, um, you know, now he he's actually not running at Full Bus News. I think he's running at Motor Mile, too. But, you know, it was, it's fun to race with those guys door-to-door -door like that. And we didn't even touch each other for 40 laps. And it was great. It was it was him and I neck and neck. And it's fun doing that, especially at Motor Mile. You can do that. Good. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I won't have any side to side. We'll be out front. Isn't that the way? Isn't that the way we all like it? <laughs> yeah, I wish I would have been up front too. But you got I was working my way up through the field. Good time. So up, we're uh, up front is a lot better. Uh, yeah, I prefer up front. It's easier on a paint job too. But uh, <laughs> so where are you racing next, Natalie? We are. Um, I'm heading up to uh, South Boston or Danville, Virginia, where my race shop is tomorrow. I'm um, not only my racing this weekend, but I'm trying to get. Um, my camper all ready to go, and I'm heading out next week for a little, I guess I really wouldn't call it a vacay because I'm going to be working, but my boyfriend races for the 410 Knoxville Nationals next week, so I uh, practice Friday, race Saturday, and then Sunday my friend Michelle and I head out to uh, good old great state of Iowa. I'm going to hang out there and sell t-shirts and, and um, do some work for him and also get in some dirt sprint car races. You'll like it out there. Oh, well, I've raced out there. I that's right. I was I grew up racing at Knoxville and um really, you, really miss it and wish I could get back in but Where did you say you were from? I'm from North Dakota. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's still snowing there, isn't I, I'm, it? I'm an Iowa boy. No, it's not snowing. <laughs> it's it's, it's actually they're going through a heat wave right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so. of the country is. You you heard about Brad Keselowski today, didn't you? Just what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the fans out there, Brad was uh, doing some testing at Road Atlanta today. Got in a pretty heavy crunch. Uh, had to go to the hospital. They did some testing and x-rays on him. Uh, he, he got some good beating and banging done on him. Doesn't look like he has any broken bones. Just got a text a little bit ago. He They are now back at home. Oh, good. So good. Uh, they let him out of the hospital. Um, we, we, we sort of joked with him about did Richard Childress get a hold of him or something like that and piss him off. Or, <laughs> but we let that go. And what, were they, what was he testing there? Because that's, that's not a cup truck. They run nationwide at Road Atlanta, don't they? Didn't they run nationwide there? Um, I think you may have just been doing testing for just the road course Generic experience. road course test, yeah. yeah. That's a good place to go. Yeah, it's fast, real fast. Yeah. Good deal. When you when are you going to do some road course racing? Um, when somebody helps me out and sponsors me. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody pays me to get in one, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am. I mean, we've we've been approached, you know, by a, you know, one of the top NASCAR teams out there to run with them next year. It's just, um, you know, with that you need to, you know, kind of have funding and bring a uh, check. Yeah. Bring, it, bring a good checkbook. If I could uh, get a sponsorship, that would mean, I mean, everything that would, you know, I mean, we'd, we'd move up with one of the, which, I mean, not one of the, I mean, they're all, every team out there is great, but, I mean, I really respect this organization, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully something, you know, somebody out there wants to take a chance on, on me, and, you know, we'll, um, you know, keep continuing to grow with that organization, but trying to working really hard to see what I can come up with. Well, I've, I've got some things working, Natalie. I may be giving you a call and see if you might be interested in some of our Internet venues we're going to try working out. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Any, Anything will help. And just 
trying to grow with this organization, and they have, you know, some good ideas, and, and so do I, and so just trying to work really hard and get some, like, new updated sponsorship packets together, and if anybody you knows interested, they can go to my website or shoot me an email or anything or look me up on Facebook, and if anybody ever wants to help, I would be more than appreciative. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. You guys got some more or any more questions? No, but I do have to come. I'm not a slave to fashion or anything, but I do have to compliment the suit you had the other day. I saw you walking through the pits, but you even had the shoe that matched the stripe that went down the, the pant leg. That was awesome. Yeah, I... I've never um, seen anybody pull that one off, and that, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, I, um, Lady Eagle makes a fantastic suit, and I'm waiting on a new one that just going to absolutely rock everybody's socks. It is so neat, and I designed it, and I'm looking forward to hopefully getting that soon, but um, Lady Eagle and Design 500, they do a fantastic job of you know, making my suits, and for Katie over there, I designed these crazy things, and she somehow puts them, puts them on the suit and makes it work, and it looks awesome. You need to you need to get her together with uh, Terry O'Connell. I beg your pardon. You need to get her together with Terry O'Connell with all the crazy designs she does. The really nice stuff she she comes up with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, they do they do a great job of making the suits, and they're safe. That's why I really like wearing them. Cool. Definite fashion statement. It, it had me done. I you know Hi. I'm still a black shoe guy. <laughs> Red. Red shoe. Red shoe. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's my problem this year. I got the wrong color shoes. Maybe it's because they're both the same color. They say I blue's go, bad luck. a yellow luck. shoe. I need a yellow right shoe, maybe. Blue's bad luck. Blue's bad luck. Blue shoes. <laughs> maybe the car is. <laughs> bell bottoms, or I call my bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. My shoes. Bell. That's actually a dirt track thing that they go over my shoes. Yep. Right. Right. I don't have the bell bottoms, but mine always go over the shoes. Well, that's the big. You know, I think NASCAR kind of made the, the straight leg suit famous because uh, every other division of racing is still using the. Uh, you know, the elastic cuff at the bottom, I think. I won't I won't go without it. The elastic cuff? Well, you yeah. have the elastic cuff inside the belt. Yeah. In, inside the, but then inside they put the, the boot cuff on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. We've gone into the fashion of motorsports. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> we'll go anywhere. I got here. stickers on my helmet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I actually, I got the first, uh, my first, this helmet th th this year is the first one I've ever had airbrushed. I've always gone. You got like either, that Captain America thing going yeah, on. Yeah, it's either yeah, been it's silver, cool black, or, or white helmets. And silver was always, because it does hide dirt a little bit better than white. And right. black shows every and White looking, starts looking like yeah. a cue ball with all the little so, marks on it, yeah. No, that's kind of a, a Evil Knievel kind of, you know, a tribute I, to him. I've seen that's kind of what we did. <laughs> 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 it's like, I couldn't resist that much. <laughs> yeah, after that last race, I did do a couple of Evil Knievels, <laughs> or Joey Chitwoods, as I like to call them. Oh, jeez. So. Oh. But anyway. All right, Daddy, we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here. And like I said, don't forget to go watch it. Remember, this is a video show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look it out next time. <laughs> so smile for the camera. She actually, she, as soon as she hangs up, I'm going to play her little thingy. Oh yeah, the uh, the, the bite, they had a cut. Yeah. Sure, the, 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 the cut sound scene. bite. I'm yeah. not very videography. <laughs> the just commercial. Bring, just bring me here because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and you do a good job of it, by the way. I know. I, 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 I've even been told I talk in my I, sleep. I, I, was, I was hoping Joey. I was hoping Joey was going to be able to make it, but like like I said with uh, Brad, he's he's tied up with that. But he would have loved to have been on tonight. Putting you two together would have been really good. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws meets Jaws, huh? There you go. Oh, Lord. Da -da -da. All right, Natalie, get on out of here. Have a good night and uh, have fun up in Knoxville. Yes, thank you, guys. Have a good night. Don't you eat too. too many loose meat sandwiches. No, I'll, I'm cooking. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sounds better than loose meat. Boys are going to be spoiled. All right, thank you guys so much. Take bye -bye. care. Take care. Bye. Yep, bye-bye. Oh, loose meat sandwiches are good. It's well, did you hit the same traffic I did on the way in? All right. No, no I, I was so you down at his house oh, finishing up for the day. Oh, oh, all right, all right. So Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. Well, we can talk for Joey. Us anyway. So we got nobody after this. I'm going to try to call somebody. All right, we're back. So PC Doctors, your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. 
1248 North King Street, Hampton, Virginia. Check out the website, www.pcdoc.bz. You'll be glad you did. Got a problem with the computer running slow? Bring it down. We'll get it taken care of. Get it all cleaned up. Get all that antivirus stuff off. Get all that mess cleaned up. PC Doctors, 757-727-9263. Your one-stop right, shop. We're back. So uh, we've got a chat room up. If anybody wants to send in a topic or anything they'd like to discuss, put their two cents worth, keep it clean, uh, shoot it out there. Uh, I started a little thing. Did you want to discuss this? Yeah, let's I, talk. I, let's talk about this. Okay, I'm getting. I'm I, getting I put, serious I put here. a little Glasses thing out on Facebook. Is it, I mean, I, I, we've and I've discussed this forever till I'm blue in the face. Uh, you know, reducing the cost of racing, going back to the old days you know, of, of where you could reuse the tires, and you know, it wasn't required to spend a you know a gazillion dollars every time you rolled in a racetrack to run for half a gazillion dollars. So I'm trying to. I put a thing out on Facebook that I call MED, and I kind of stole that name from an old division I used to race up at Flemington. It was the Affordable Modified Division. You switch the letters around, and you get MED. Uh, asphalt cars, you run a Hoosier G60. It's a tire that uh, I've got testimonials from guys that race them up in New York and Pennsylvania that race them six, seven times. I got a guy, Dwayne Van Tassel, who's running up at uh, Lake Erie Speedway. He's on last year's tires are running top five. It's a $100 tire. So it's cheaper than what we're running. You can reuse it. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to do to this was I wanted to, the two greatest recurring expenses are the tires and the fuel. Right. You're buying $8 a gallon of fuel, you're buying $125, $130 tires every week. Can you reuse the tires and can you add an advantage and police running pump gas? So you stop at the local Exxon or the BP or wherever it is, you fill up your race hauler and your generator and you fill up your race car too. My thought on that was, in order for those guys to be equal with the 500 plus horsepower modifieds that still exist out there, uh, and allow everybody to race together, would be you'd have to give a significant advantage to the guys that run the pump gas. And my thought on that was give them a four barrel and give them a 10 inch wheel to spread that tire out. So you're giving them more traction and you're giving them more carburetor to run on that lesser fuel because obviously you're going to need a lesser engine. My car in this division, if this division raced tomorrow, I would have to run on an 8 inch rim with my two barrel carburetor because the engine's too high, the, the compression's too high in the engine. We would have to run race fuel in it. It would be the only option we have. And you'd blow it up on pump gas. But you could go, conceivably, get a crate motor for $3,000, drop it in your car, fill it up with high test, and go to the racetrack and race for, and this goes back to if you can get enough people together to do this, if we can get 10 teams together to do this, you can approach virtually any speedway and say, we have a division that we want to race at your speedway and we'll run for back gate purses. Okay, instantly everybody, oh, I hear it now, the back gate, the back gate. The back gate will commonly, for a 10 car field, probably produce about $300, $350 for the winner, which isn't much. But you're not buying tires and you're going to run the same ones next week. So you have eliminated at least at, well, even a two-tire night, you've eliminated at least $125 from, the, from, from your expense right there. And if you can do it on pump gas, you've taken another $100 out of it. Now, didn't you say that those tires could probably run five to six races? Well, that's what everybody that runs this tire tells me. I, I, like I was just saying, Dwayne Van Tassel is a friend of mine that used to run down here uh, uh -huh. in the Rolling Thunder Modified Series and at Langley as well. He's racing up at Lake Erie and running top five with tires he had last year. Uh, another friend of mine that's also on, and, and I've got a post on Facebook to try and generate some interest, and I'd like to get a meeting together and, and kick this idea around. I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel. I'm not looking to reinvent the cars. But I am looking to add some advantages to people who are willing to do it cheaper. Do it cheaper, more people, better show. Well, exactly. If we can dig some of these cars out of the mothballs and actually come out and race for basically what it costs to fill the tank and get in and out of the racetrack, you know, when you get that insulting last place $50 check, it actually covered some of the expenses. It covered the gas in the truck or, or the car as long as you, you know, I'm trying to generate a population and see where it's at. And then you can, we, we can approach tracks in that area. Obviously, I'm not going to approach Concord if everybody's from Richmond. Yeah, well, the other thing, too, is if you do get a series sponsor for that, too, that helps you out as well. Well, that's something even better and grander, but I'm not even in a position to really put that out there at this point until you've got something already until I have a, a product that I, some people that are interested in coming in and willing to do this and and that's really what I would like to see uh, you know you've got the website up right there your, your Hoosier G60 is is a this 90 is a, groove tire too. a 90 or 95 dollar tire yeah so by the time bucks. you ship it and get it to your house it's what 110 115 dollar tire but more if it was a 200 dollar tire you can use it again next race 
It's and a groove that's tire. The it, it, it's a it. it's a groove tire too. Now the there is a Goodyear dealer or distributor over in Virginia Beach, Chesapeake area. Who's your one too? And get hooked up with those and have them ship in twenty. Right. Well, for that matter, if you were doing it in this area, you go pick your tires up. I'm just no, I don't want any of this tire barn tech crap, none of that. Buy your tires, ship them to your house, take them home, bring them so, to the racetrack. Them if you want to. I don't want to see it. I don't want that's my thing is if if if, if it looks like it's soaked, it, no, no, this, don't this come out there with tire. tires in plastic yeah. bags and all gooed up. <laughs> Roll them in the dirt or something before you come out to the racetrack, and 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 put them on the car. If it gets that bad, you can add a durometer rule. That's not that big a deal. But I'm thinking well, for the guys, the pump gas guys, take the weight rule down to them, take the cars that we have, make them, say, 2,700 pounds from the 2,600 that they are now. Basically, for most teams, that means fill the tank. Fill it up with the high dollar race fuel and go racing. And initially, probably our first couple of races would be the cars we have now on this tire. But, you know, I see some, of these, some teams that have just can't simply afford to do it anymore. And... Here's going to be a very controversial one. I had a long discussion with Mike Leach here. Now, I read an article in, in Circle Track Magazine a couple months ago about a $2,000 street stock with an LS1 motor, basically a, a stock Camaro motor. Use the injection system. If you ran the pump gas, why not let them run the injection system if you wanted to? This would give somebody with a, with a very low budget, you could, you could pick up your wrecked Camaro, take the motor, the system, and everything, put it right in the car, and go out and race, and actually have a shot, because a, a street Camaro makes, what, 300 horsepower? Yeah. And a crate the, makes, what, 350? But, uh, <laughs> okay, and... 350 and, with I, an $800 carburetor on it. I, I agree with that, and that would be a great idea. It really would, because then they could do it with the Mustang motors, too, the V8 Mustang motors. And run it on pump and gas. And run it on pump gas. The and now only you're back, you're back you're to shopping a junk yards for parts if okay. you want to. And then, then the only problem that you're going to have doing that right. is you're going to have some wisecracker go get an LS7 vet or something like that, something that is so radical that it's got five, 600 horsepower, and put it into these cars. What is killing racing today... So what, what, I mean, what, is, what does the LS7 motor cost? <laughs> Well, he's good. At I've seen the crates. Isn't seven, eight, nine thousand dollars. It's still minimum. cheaper than what we're running. Well, I agree. No, no, but what know, I'm saying is, I know what people are going to say. Oh, I got a five thousand dollar Midwest Motorsports motor in my car. That's great. Put are a you, on are the you engines. winning? Put a claimer on the engines. I'm not a big fan of the claimer thing. But it's, it's going to keep the people from going out there buying a. a I, it, I mean, a. Uh, I, I, I gotta, I gotta agree a, with that. A seven thousand dollar claimer engine, a, a, a crate motor, is still cheaper than what we're building. You know, we got high compression roller cam. But you, the thing you, is, you're running, want... you're running steel heads, which cost you more than the aluminum ones. But you're still trying. Uh, and to see, I say let, allow them to run aluminum heads the, for the pump gas guys. Yeah, that's another advantage. Yeah, and take I, the, I, I say do that. Yeah, I would, I would. You can get, eat, you can get um, strict on the safety, reduce the weight rule, or eliminate it. Well, isn't the whole thing trying well, to get to a, a good racing division with cheap cross? Exactly. That's what I'm looking to do. That's what I'm trying to get I, away from that Corvette engine. I want the hundred. The, I want the hundred car fields back. The fifty car fields back. I don't think you'll get to get them. Well, you're probably not going to get that many. But there's no reason you can't put thirty cars on a racetrack. This race car on pump gas and a reusable tire would be cheaper to operate than a U car. I agree with you on that. Because the U cars are the running Hoosiers divisions. and they're putting them on every week. Yep, I, I agree with that, and, and I agree with opening up the rules a little bit. And allowing them to pretty much do what you want. You're going to run pump gas. You're going to be on this eight-inch tire, and it's a groove tire. And, and 3602s. The, right. The, the thing is that we're searching is, is and, and anybody who's got any input on it, is exactly how to determine specific gravity. I know you use a hydrometer, but I've never used one. I don't know much about it. So you know, somewhere along it's the line, easy. there's a line between what pump gas is and what leaded race fuel is, and it should show up in specific gravity. I would think. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, but I'm not a chemist. I'm not a gasoline man. You can, you can test tube it. Well, and that's what I'm thinking. But I'm I, I confess my ignorance in the subject. That's where I need the input. Even if we don't go that route, still running on this tire is going to slash the price of racing to nothing. A lot of promoters don't want to hear it because a lot of promoters sell tires. They're going to run a track tire. Well, and and I think I think the the I agree with you on the tire deal. You got to run a thirty six oh two. Who's your tire? That's it. Eight inch. That's it. Or eight inch tire on a ten inch rim. That's it. 
you know, right. how, what you were talking about. Right, exactly. Um, that's a good idea. You're still going to need something in place to take care. I agree with, you know, go to a junkyard, get a motor, put it in, you got a race car. Right. I agree with that. Um, you're still going to have to wait to control a little bit of the motors. Putting the big four barrel on there, yeah, give them a ton of horsepower. Give them as much as they want. Well, you're going to have that 8-inch tire. With, and there's only so much you're going to make with, 80, with, with, with 92 80, octane, 93 yeah. octane. But we talked about this earlier when we talked earlier this week. Right. About and I, and I like the idea, but there's ways around the fuel rules. There really is, and that's well, there's where additives and short as everything else. Exactly. You uh, know. I, and you know there are oxygenators and stuff that you can add to the fuels that aren't going to show up in specific gravity. You're still S there's some of you're them, still yeah. running on 93 octane. Um, and, and I don't he, know he, how much more power and, and you're going I'll to throw, make with I'll that. I'll throw this by you. Um, here's an idea. Go karts have been doing them for years. You need a hundred gallon tank. Pump around. You could you could do that, but now, now you're in the logistical end, and I'm not. This is my idea. I'm putting it out there. This isn't my series. I have nothing to gain off of this. I certainly don't want to be toting gasoline and race tires around. Well, you don't have to tote the, ga the gas around, but but now I got to get a track to supply it, which means now no, somebody. No, 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 no. You well, just need the barrel. You, you just need to pump around unit to be able to do it, and then that would be no problem. Don't buy the tires. Get out of the tire business. I don't I want the tire business. I don't this want the tire business. You're gonna run. I don't want any part of Boom. the purse. I want to um. see <coughs> racing come back to the way I think it should be. And well, and and and, and, the, and the problem reduce with the price. I, I agree with you. And the problem with that is, uh, is there's so much racing. Okay, back in the '70s when racing was really affordable when you went to the junkyard you picked up and even into the 80s i should say you went out and got a car you took it home you stripped it you put a roll cage in it you, you could went use racing. the block if you got you a good used block everything. you could use the crank you yeah. probably have to buy rods and everything. pistons something like that the problem that has happened over the years is that people have become out and said i can build this better i can do this better this is this is america people are thinking ahead Okay, I can build this, I sure. can build that. I remember when the late models went from where you still had to have a stock front snout on the sucker into having and, you know, I two like, frames. I like the stock front snout. Find them. Well, exactly. And, then and, th and that's why they we've, went We've got to stock front snout cars out there that they're buying the reproduction Chevelle chassis for $800 and butchering the thing. By the time you're done with it, you got a $2,000 clip on the car. Call up Troyer, buy one for 500 and weld it on. Well, and then it's that's what needs made. to be done. And if you wad up one horn, get a piece of two by three and put it on their level. It, it's cheaper. It is cheaper. Uh, I had a discussion with Tony Cully the other day. We were talking about rack and pinion. Everybody's oh no rack and pinion. A rack, a rack, top dollar rack, is eight hundred bucks from Sweet. Yeah. You can get a Cavalier out of the junkyard. Use the same thing. Not as durable, but it's cheap. Buy a steering box, a center link, tie rods, Pitman arm, idler arm. You got a thousand dollars worth of front at end least. Parts. Yeah, at least. Okay, and if you're using one of the quick boxes without a quickener, the box alone's a thousand dollars. Yeah, mine is a bone stock Chevrolet Camaro one at twelve to one. It's a four hundred dollar box. The rack costs that much. I could use the stock Cavalier one. If you wanted to, yeah. And and you know it's it's the initial the initial setup cost. It, so in other really words, you're talking more to. you're talking more like a Troyer type modified. I'm, I'm talking about what we're running. If you did show up with a Troyer type car, I would say make it weigh the same and drag it up to four inches and have fun. No. If it's on pump gas, it gets a four barrel. If it's on race gas, it gets a two barrel. If it's on race gas, it gets a two barrel. Has to weigh twenty seven hundred pounds. You could look at racing junk. There's there's just as many Troyer cars out there as IMCA cars. Yeah, and I've they're the same that. damn price. Yeah, yeah, and I've noticed that. They're the same damn price. I like this idea, and I'm going to throw. Okay, what are you going to license this division? Well, in other like words, you've got to you, buy a license to you, race in it? Yeah. Not for me. I, that's a lic Licensing to me is a way for a sanctioning body to uh, cover their overhead or make profit. Cover their overhead. Cover their cover overhead their to pay for officials and yep. that sort of thing. And that's why I think you need to reduce the rule book to make it easier to tech. If the car has pump gas, it's got to make ride height. That's basically your tech. And it's got to have the right tire on it. Right. That's it. Check the fuel. Pour it in a tube, watch the ball, ball float or whatever the hydrometer works. Again, there's my ignorance. 
and the tire's good, the fuel's good, you won, congratulations. Or you got race fuel, go on the scales, 2,700 pounds, you got the tire, eight inch rim, off the scales. Great run. And then that's it. Obviously the safety is the only thing, and the, and the construction of the cars, it wouldn't change. Yeah, they would have to stay. But I would still open this thing up so that you could pull different types of modifieds in on an equal playing field. Granted, is this all, are these all the answers for this? No. No, we may go out there and find that there is a built motor wheel and type modified that kills everybody. And you know what? Next week it's going to weigh 2,800 pounds. I, I'm with you, you on you everything. Gotta I really you got to adjust it. You have to build it. You have to grow it. I mean, and every division constantly makes changes in rules, but it always seems that they make things more expensive by trying to make it cheaper. They keep adding things to the rule books, and it costs you more to build around them. Years ago, I, I had a nine to one motor that was, well, if we had to pay for all the labor, it was a $20,000 motor. It yeah. made 340 horsepower. And, and I, I agree with you. The, the only one I've seen and I keep an eye on is the IMCA Modifieds. And I think they've done a great job over the years they do. keeping things. They do. Um, and we're running, we're running an abominated version of that. Yeah. And I've always said you need to follow them rules closer than you need to make your own rules because they've gotten out of hands with the shocks down here. Yeah, that's that's a concern. That's that's a very Rolling that's, Thunder modified. That's, that's a very big and, concern. And well, it was it was always open. It was no big deal. And I mean, up till this year, I could put a ninety dollars shock on my car and run competitive. I'm sitting out there qualified eighth on the grid the other night, and I'm looking at all the Penske's in front of me, and I'm like, maybe it's time to drop a couple of thousand dollars to make this thing work. Make better. it thing work better. Yeah. And, and that's kind of does defeat the purpose. A lot of guys have, have mentioned a spec shock. I know the Actor and I think Old Dominion runs a Coney spec shock that's actually click adjustable. Yeah. And, and you know, that's not a bad idea. <coughs> I heard a steel body sealed, sealed shock. These are all very good ideas, but I'm not, to start this division off, I wouldn't put that implication in there and have somebody with a set of Penske shocks that wants to come out of race just stay home well, because and, he's not going to buy shocks. And that's a rule you could start out saying, okay, and, and it doesn't matter. $56 Bilstein shocks. These are the six shocks. That's what I always liked about the Pro 6. You have four shocks to pick from. Right. But again, now, that's be, it. be careful with the spec shock thing because every shock is adjustable depending on how much you want to spend and how much work you want to do. A welded sealed body will unweld, cut apart, weld back together if you're crafty enough. And you know they're going to pull that stuff. And, and, they, and they do do it. It's and been now, done. And now to tech it, you got to bring a shock down to the track or send them out to have Send them out to have You get a little crazy with that. I, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, have them rebuildable. If you did a full spec shock, you could do a claimer swap. And for, we've for, talked about that. For yeah. 50 bucks, you get my shocks and a $50 bill, and I get your shocks. Yep. And, and that you could do. But that, we would all have easy. to be on the same shock because right. I can't come and hand you my, my set of QA1s and get your Penske's for $50. And, and, and the way it's going to happen, and, and the only way claimer rules work is if they're used regularly right you go to the imca nationals you win that race you know your motor's getting bought right you know you're getting claimed one way shape or form you are right. getting claimed but and and, and, th and that's the only way you can go into it IMCA, and then you guys race for twenty five hundred dollars and exactly win. that's what i'm saying imca pays pretty well so it it actually justifies for us to go out there and race for three hundred fifty four hundred dollars to win and tell you you got to pull your motor out after the race. You're taking the fun out of the game. Well, and, and I, it wouldn't be something you, that. No, yeah, well, no, it wouldn't be it. something that would happen in the beginning. Maybe the shocks. That would be the deal. But I would as it gone and we got thirty cars out there. Hell yeah, you take a motor. Point blank. Period. Well, if you got thirty cars and you're running from back gate, your purse is going to be a thousand, two thousand dollars. Then, then that's what then I'm it, getting at. Then you then can it justify. Would be worth it. Initially, yeah. I'm trying to get ten. I'm trying to get ten guys that want to slash their tire bill to peanuts compared to what we're spending now. Well, and and, I, and I think it's a great idea. Got. Just run the cars you got. It, you know what? And I've always said it. it: if they would leave us alone on the tires and say go to that thirty-six oh two, which is a groove tire, it, they run it. At, probably run it up at Saluda. They run it all over the place. It works. It's proven. It, it works. Let it roll. Erie, Pennsylvania. My buddy Dwayne racing up there. Scott, they, they've got 20 plus cars every week. Yep. Let it roll. 20 plus cars every this week. Two and they're running the same tires forever. The hell I had to go through the hell I had to go through to get my tires to run one race. Don't even get me started. <laughs> you don't know. Even, don't even get and me started. And you know. It's, a ter it's terrible. 
you know? It's terrible. And, it, thanks for coming. Let us torture you for a night and see if you come back next week. Right. Uh, and, you know, and the other thing I've got going on out there is, you know, I'm hearing the rumors. I'm not pointing fingers. But tires aren't on this even playing field out there. From what I and I'm hearing it from multiple sources. People scuffing stuff during the week, and it's winding up in the barn. Tags being changed, barcodes, all of this crap. You know whether it's true or not. I don't know, but it could be. And the simple well, and fact, that's, and that's the bad thing about rumors. Another thing I've noticed too is, I've never seen so many good running cars run so inconsistent out there. I've noticed that too. And I don't know why. Well, the bad part about it is, is I was one lap down in the back holding on for dear life, and I'm catching the guy, and this is nothing against Cameron, I know he had an off night, but I'm catching his butt as hard and as fast, and I know my tires ain't any good. Right. Why am I catching him? But he was, he's was he been that way the last couple of races. Why? Did exactly. somebody, is something broken in the car? You'd think they would have found it. I, you know, to go from that good to that bad, unexplainably, exactly. why? Why? And it's not only Mike Rudy who's, who's been dominant for a good part of the season. He, I had a great battle with Mike Rudy and Cameron Patrick last night. We were, or, or Saturday night, we were nowhere near the front. Yeah, Mark Sly is gone, and and, and and Chris Johnson was back there with us too. These, I didn't really get any faster. Something happened to all three of these cars at the same time. You know, Jimmy Humlet was in there, and he's having issues with tires. My buddy Hunter Slate won't even come back out. He's 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 so fed up with the tires that they're dealing with out there. He's like, I'm done. Well, I'm done, and spending a fortune to do it. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the gas thing you were talking about is $1,500 for testing the gas. Oh, that's the big computerized. Well, it's actually a rather small one. It actually plugs into a laptop through USB. 15 yeah. All right. So, I mean, that's not an unreasonable course, piece of equipment. If you buy the big one, it's 10 to 20 grand. Yeah, no, no. I'm thinking like the tube, the, the, yeah. the test tube with the floating ball in it. I don't know how accurate it is, uh, you know, as long as it will tell us the difference between 93 and 108. You know, now uh, Mike Leach pointed out today that Sunoco makes a, a, a 98 octane that's on seven dollars a gallon. You there? Will it tell us the difference between that? I don't know. I don't know. Go down, go down to the airport and get. Well, I mean, the difference between race fuel and pump gas—you could tell with your nose. Yeah. You know, I don't know what variations are in there of the, you know, the I guess between 93 and 102 or 105 octane where race fuel really begins. Can we run ethanol? One more, one more curve. I don't know. Through it, I don't know. What would that do? What's the and, price of ethanol hey, Dan, these days? Dan, we're, we're in here trying to discuss About trying to set up a whole new racing division. Oh, yeah? In the modified well, series. This is what I pitched. Was uh, I, I pitched for, for an IMCA-type modifier, really any type modified, to run on an affordable, reusable tire like the Hoosier G60, and if you ran pump gas to get a significant <clears throat> excuse me, weight advantage. How do you determine the pump gas? Um, I agree with... I mean... I think the pump gas thing would be cheaper too. Well, absolutely, and, and but you have to make enough advantages for a car on pump gas to run with the 500 plus horsepowered race gas cars. And I, and I thought giving them a wider rim on the tire—it's a 10 inch. The tire's got a 10 inch footprint. If you put a 10 inch rim or even a 12 inch rim on a thing, it should out definitely outrun one on an 8 inch wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and, I. Mean, you know, I don't know if you want to play around with weights and stuff, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. Well, weight weight's usually a cheap and easy fix. Take left side weight out of the cars that are too fast. Yeah. Well, or just add right side weight to them. But then, I always go back and I always think it's 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 funny. You're going to end up having to put a weight rule in it. Steve Kinzer about ten years ago built a sprint car, just before he went to Australia. With him in the car weighed 985 pounds. Steve Kinzer's 200 pounds. Right, right. Well, every bit of it. So you, we're going to have to have yeah, and, and some sure, weight rules there. Well, and figuring, you know, if you maintain steel suspension components. Yeah. Uh, and that's what that, that's a lot of things. And, and you maintain the safety standards, your inch and three quarter, 095 tubing, things like that. There's only so light you're going to make the car. What are you going to put? Aluminum bumpers on a thing? Oh, you got magnesium, you, know, you got titanium. You well, you, you, no, no you, titanium, no magnesium, yeah, no carbon really, fiber parts. Yeah. You know, you just leave that out. I would, if you wanted to, and I think it's a safety thing, if you wanted to run a carbon fiber drive shaft, I'd allow you. Because I would agree with that. We've seen dirt. what steel drive shafts do when they come through the floor. I would agree with that. A carbon fiber one turns into dust and rags. Well, and, and that's, that's probably, I would want to see how they run on asphalt. 
I'm going to use them in the sports cars. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, well, yeah, it's not new technology. It's out there. It's been out there. Well, yeah, and I mean, they use them, you know, when I was racing dirt super late models, we were using the carbon fiber in 05 and 04, and I mean, it's, it, you know, those things are so violent, and it holds up. Right, and if the drive shaft explodes, it doesn't take your arm and leg with it. Anthony Kincaid had one explode on his late model, his dirt car. Ask him about a it. A carbon fiber one? Yeah. I had one explode in an RXC, and it just... Yeah. Just delaminates. It turns so, to powder and dust. Well, and and Bill Mullis had a, a steel one, and, and Brett and Hamilton had one. Bill was do very too. Bill was very lucky in a sense because Bill still bears bears the bears marks the marks. of that drive yeah. shaft. And had Brett that, had that been composite, he'd be. He'd, it wasn't a month after Bill. Brett had um, broke a third link, and same thing happened. Drive shaft pulled out, right, and beat the hell out of his. Out of the side panels. And I, I had one peel all the tin out of the inside of the car. At Forge, I, knock wood, it didn't touch me, but it was it was it was violent. That, yeah. it was, you know, inches from my elbow and removing it. So we have a guest on the phone, and we've we've just kind of dragged him into our conversation. <laughs> I, I'm probably sure he wanted to say something. Hey Dan, how you doing? <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> Sorry, you caught us in a moment of of, of of passionate racing talk. How are you? Oh, I'm well. I'm well. I just got done eating dinner. My fiance made tilapia. Uh, who are he, huh? Tilapia. 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 Some fish. Oh, okay. Fish. 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 Okay. If you said fish. We're going to bring it down to Matt's terms here. I'm not a sea bearing Good person. Good fish. If you would have said carp or catfish or trout or he bass, a country boy. I would have known what you were talking about. <laughs> if you said flounder, you would have known flounder. Flounder, I would have known what you were talking about. I would have known. Wahoo. Maui Maui Dolphin. I would have known it. That's a drink, isn't it? Maui Maui. <laughs> no. A mahi, mahi, mahi Mahi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, mahi Mahi. You know where I died. <laughs> no, the Mahi Mahi is the fish. Mahi Mahi. Okay. Got it. Mai Tais. Mai Tais. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That's where you're okay. getting at. We'll get one for you, and you'll know it later. <laughs> Dan, we're just going nuts here, so just jump in, and, and we'll talk about anything. Well, no, I said tilapia, and, you know, I'm getting interviewed right now. She looks at me, she goes, no, it's tilapia. Tilapia. Tomato, tomato. Was it good? Well, depends <laughs> on where you're from. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was actually watching a show last night, and it was about these people that are planning for Armageddon and at the end of 2012. The guy had converted his, his swimming pool to where part of it he raises tilapia in, uh-huh. And has a also part of it is wet so he can grow uh, plants, uh, herbs, veggies, you name it. He's growing it in, in the swimming pool, and it's all stuff is all being recycled back through. Huh. Well, I, I don't know. I'm not too keen on the whole 2012 thing. I don't really think it's going to happen. <laughs> if it happens, it happens. With, We're gone. With the amount of free time I have, if I had a pool, it'd be growing things all by itself. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think you'd want to eat them. Yeah. But uh, no, it was, it was a lot of neat things that uh, that they were doing with it. It was sort of cool. I mean, it, they, it, they need to put that. Did you see the guy it. that had an engine that actually ran on wood? Yeah. You have you ever seen that? Done no. Before? He had a like an old pickup truck. Yeah. That had like some kind of wood stove furnace that powered yeah, and, the engine, and, and, the, and you could plug into it, and he'd run the entire compound. The truck was a generator too. Yeah, basically like what steam engine was back then. Or? Well, I, no, 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 some no, no, kind no. of superheated the, wood or the, gas. The, the, that the wood fluid. that they burn, the wood actually has is is actually flammable. So the That's smoke, I should say, the smoke and your fumes from it. Right. So what they do is you start a fire and you just put the plume. Right into the intake. Right into the, the carburetor. It'll run all day long. That was all, I want to run my house off that. Yeah. <laughs> I have a great idea for that would light bulb. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, now and Dan, you get in on this too. I want you to think about this, okay? What they're doing now up in in Iowa is they are taking these the corn stalks out of the field and they're rolling them up. They're using them for no. No, they're not smoking them. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're That's not, the husks. No, they're not smoking it. But what they're doing is is that they're using it for blockades during the winter, and they're also feeding their cattle. And I got thinking about this, and a friend of mine up in Gloucester has one where his hot water heater, and he heats his house off a wood-burning stove. 
Uh-huh. It's, cu- right, it's right, specially right. made, heats the water, it's heat inducted into the house. Right. Yeah, you yeah, know, I've seen that. Under the floorboards. Okay, board, under the floorboards in the hot water. Why couldn't you take, and he says he's got to stock it once a day. And this is a good size deal. Well, why couldn't you just square bale these stocks and do it that way? But instead of having just doing your heat supply, why couldn't you have a steam generator on there that would run your house too? And think of how much popped corn you'd produce. Well, I think that sounds like a good idea. I mean, heck, they're using corn and corn stocks for everything anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon it's going to be, you know, NASCAR is going to want to make the bodies out of ground up corn stalks glued together. Corn carbon fiber. Corn carbon fiber? Corn, corn, corn kidding, has right? a lot of uses. A lot of people don't realize yeah. that it, you, it has corn a Corn is in a lot of crap. Mm-hmm. Corn's inside these things. Yeah. You would be you would be amazed. Oh, yeah. I mean, they use corn for everything. Look, look, mm-hmm. at, look at anything, almost anything you buy in the store. Look it's got on a corn the back, product in it. Ingredients, and you will see some sort of corn in it. Starches, corn syrup. Shirts have corn in them. No. Shirts? No, yeah, there is. I mean, it's used in fibers, and corn I'm is used in a lot of things. You're on corn. Alcohol? Isn't this sort of corny? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and somebody had to bring it to a low. He did. <laughs> but you think about it. You could literally run your household without ever buying any electricity from anybody. No, absolutely. I think so, too. I, you know, it's going to... Some people are going to get to that point. You know, the old solar panel thing's bad for a while. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. <laughs> hey, Dan. Well, Those are getting expensive. Let, let's start a company, and then the company can sponsor the racing. And I'll tell you what, after a couple races, I'm going to need a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Little bit expensive out there, ain't it, bud? This stuff gets expensive quick. Yeah. So oh, we yeah. went to Roush today and picked up a road course for in housing and road course spindles, which you know they're they're not too much, but you know that whole list of you know to go to the road courses costs a lot of money, man. Well, yeah. What I think and, the brakes alone are what twenty or forty thousand dollars. Yeah, we've got really good brakes that are going on this bad boy, but. You know, I think we're going to have a decent run there. I mean, I'm pretty optimistic. I know last year I had a crap that I put in a, a car that was, you know, they, the Keselowski's took straight from ORP and took the, you know, Watkins Glen. So, I mean, they didn't really put much into the setup. They kind of, you know, made sides a little symmetrical as much as they could. But, you know, this car I'm taking next week, this thing's a, this thing's a full-blown hot rod for these right turns too so i'm pretty excited i think it's a good opportunity yeah for those that don't know dan road runs in the nationwide series he's going to be running part in, time huh? <laughs> what what oh, i run part time well i was just saying well you run in the nationwide series and th- I'm, without saying full or part time it sounds good I'm trying to make you look good okay hush up boy <laughs> no absolutely I, and i should take that back i i mean this is a great opportunity for me and he's going to be running uh, with Jennifer Jo Cobb up at uh, Watkins Glen. Montreal, Watkins Glen, Bristol, Richmond, New Hampshire, and so it'll, it'll be it'll be a good time for sure. It's a good group of guys. I, I really really get along with the team guys, and you know I was in the shop today for a little while, and you know I don't know them all by name yet, but they're really friendly, and they all come up and shake my hand, and you know we're really looking forward to next week. We're just going to take one car. So it's just gonna be me. I think uh, I'll run her thirteen number. So, so, you, so you've talked to Steve Cookendale? Yeah, Steve Cooken Cookenhall. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he's a really good guy. We get we have a great relationship already, and communicate well, and we understand what each other wants out of this, and you know, bring the car home in one piece. But you know, Steve wants to maximize practice. You know, we did talk a little bit. We didn't talk. Too much strategy today because he's got to focus on Iowa this weekend. So I didn't really want to, you know, make him think about next week when he's got a lot on his plate for this week. So, but uh, you know, we're going to maximize practice for sure. This isn't going to be like last year where I run, you know, two laps of practice. I mean, we're going to, you know, we're bolting on a set of stickers and we're going to burn them up in practice. So, cool. We're going to have a good time. This is, you know, a lot of fun for me. I'm, my morale is 
through the roof right now compared to what it was earlier this year. So definitely, you know, it's definitely a confidence booster, and it, it, it just feels really good to be going to do something that you're passionate about and you love doing. Yeah, um, I was trying to remember is, um, there's another person I was trying to remember if they're on that team or not, a guy named Kevin Eagle. Kevin Eagle, yeah, he's awesome. Um, I actually met him formally yesterday. Uh, Kevin, yeah, I'm going to see him Saturday probably. He works with uh, Trevor Edwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to give you something to Yeah, I actually saw Wayne there. today, too. I, um, Wayne was actually in a stand-up urinal, and I walked up behind him. I go, I thought I looked a saw a skunk. <laughs> 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 yeah, Wayne's got that. He's got that one of a kind hairdo there. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know it's Wayne. Yeah. yeah. Usually when they come down here, uh, him and the crew and I will all go out and get breakfast a couple of days or something like that when they race in here. Oh, he's a great guy. Wayne and I, we've been, you know, we've been good friends for a few years since I got into ARCA, and I really, you know, Wayne's a good friend. I mean, he's a really good person, and you know, I wish he had a little bit better luck and able to do some, you know, he's, he's just as passionate as anybody else about what he wants to do and, and what he's done in the sport, so he's just a good guy, and Trevor's awesome little driver. Trevor yeah, and I, I get I on our race. I ran with Trevor last year, and he saw, that's a talented kid. Yeah, are they still going to be, do you know if they're going to be running the uh, cancer uh, car again? This coming week, he's got something with the National Firefighters or something or other. Or yeah, was, I think I... He's got yeah, a couple honorary firemen yeah, on, on, the on the team, so I don't know and, if he's got a new rap for the car or what. Um, the photos I've seen in the car this year didn't have the uh, the cancer awareness thing on there, but that was a great idea, and he was taking uh, yeah. names. Okay, uh, I, remember, I, had, I, remember, I had family members' names on that car. It was it was, it was, it was Kevin, really it was Kevin moving. And the it was guys really were still adding stuff at the track and <laughs> yeah. putting names. And they, they, they had like a thousand and something names. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Uh, yeah, that'll really raise your raise cool. your awareness when you look at all. That the, was a pretty car too. All the ribbons on that car, and there's multiple names in every one. Yeah, I think you know. He's a good kid, and we play on iRacing sometimes, and, you know, we just, we just have fun. He's, he's a really good guy, and, you know, he's definitely got a future in the sport, so. Well, next time you get on iRacing with Trevor, take him out and say it's from me. <laughs> you owe him one? <laughs> no, I don't owe him one, but it's on iRacing. Not it's not going to hurt him. I wouldn't do it in real life. I'd just take him out and iRace it. Hi, Trevor. <laughs> If we were in fun carts, I'd do the same thing. Would you like me to call Trevor and get him online here? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, Wayne, Wayne was cool today. He was in good spirits. We had a couple laughs. So. That's good. Yeah, he's a good guy. But yeah, they're a good bunch. We'll see him, uh, we'll see him all up in Motor Mile this weekend. They had a Rolling Thunder Modified race up there. Yeah, that's what he was saying. He's excited about that. So he's ready to rock and roll. Yeah, I, think I'm looking more, I think I'm looking forward to hanging out with them more than I am to the race. <laughs> oh yeah, he's a. You just had a bad year. I so had a horrible just, year. Just chill. Hey, we got to talk about something. What? Because we had talked about track bars. Right. I have some. I have some good stuff for you. All right. Well, we'll, 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 we'll do this off air. We'll, we'll do that we'll, off we'll air. We'll kick that around. Well, you know what? I had a terrible year at Lancaster. <coughs> I just the car doesn't work. At it's outside. We're, we're we're one of the dominant cars out there. We run my worst finish. It's outside's third. Do you know what? I, I chalk all that up as shit happens. Yeah, I, there, there's no other way to explain it. Well, we've had we just had a lot of bad luck there with stuff breaking and things. We really haven't gotten yeah. a, we haven't really gotten two two solid nights of racing with the same setup. It just every time yeah. we go out there, it's just something's breaking, falling apart, and it just and it's all I, you know. It's it shit It's happens. not that we don't work on the car. Yeah, I mean, you got one of the best prepared cars out there, but stuff is still beyond our control. Yeah. So. Dan, I'm sure you've had times like that. What's that? Shit happens. Oh, every time. <laughs> Everything's prepared 100%, and it still doesn't make it past the first turn. Yeah. That's right. Every time. Been there, done that. Been there, done that a ton. But, no, I think, you know, this group I'm with, they're pretty on top of things. I mean, you don't, you don't really see a lot of mechanical failures with our cars, ever. So, you know, I think, I think we're going to be good to go. What do you got? What do you got? I, I don't know. Roger's holding things up, and I'm trying to read it at distance here. And <laughs> I got know. distracted by a shiny object. Gotcha. Who's no, that? I have, uh, you know, that's awesome. It's oh, all right. 
so you're going to Iowa this week, right? No, we no. are. No, he's not going to Iowa. Her, but Jennifer wrecked in practice at ORP Saturday, and you know we only have two nationwide cars. So one that Hopkins getting a front clip put on it, and the other was going to Iowa. So you know, with her being the primary number and it's her team, you know, it's that's her car to race. Right. But uh, for the road courses, uh, I think the plan right now, which it's up in the air is her going to Montreal as well, but it's just going to be me next weekend, the one car deal at the Glen. I don't know about Montreal, whether she's going to go or not. Uh, you know, that's totally up to her. That's, that's her deal. So, uh, But then after Montreal, uh, I'm going to do uh, Bristol at the very next weekend. So we got a busy three weeks coming up for sure. Sounds like it. Yeah, it'll be good, though. I mean, I really have been itching to get back on the road again and have some fun. Well, cool. Well, it ought to be a good time. Have you been doing anything else? You been out doing any dirt racing or anything? No, man. I really haven't doing anything this year. <laughs> it's been pretty low-key on the racing side of things. You know, I was going to just kind of quit racing, and then this opportunity came along, and it lit the fire under my butt again. I'm, I'm just not ready to give up on it yet. I'm not ready to walk away. It's just, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm too young, 26 years old, and I just really want to continue doing this for a couple more years. I'm not ready yet to say I'm done. There's two old guys sitting right here that still want to go race, and I guarantee we are both older than you are. Oh, oh you see on the age thing there, bro. <laughs> I got a birthday coming up soon. Hey, well, I'm not going to, you know, hey. Well, old guys, and we still love going out and, and racing and turning left and sometimes turning right. <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, to walk away from something like this isn't easy. And um, it's almost like, you know, once you make it to this level and you get that taste of it, you you, you know, you, it's just addictive, you know. You just don't want to walk away. You just want to continue on and on and on and keep plugging at it. And that's what I... You know, that's what I'm going to do for the next few years, I think. I'm just, I'm not ready yet. Yeah. I wouldn't be happy with my life if I walked away right now. No, I, I always said if I didn't make it by the time I was 30, I'd hang it up. And then when I was 30, I said, maybe I'll give it till I'm 40. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, well, I, I might have. I've, 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 I've passed that. Yeah. I'm still going. I'll tell you what. I, I'm gonna, now I'm asking myself, how do I get out of this? <laughs> I live by the same, you know, motto there. I'm going to give it till I'm 30. <laughs> it never it never leaves you I, I think you know my dad quit when he was young and because of an accident and I think he regretted you know not staying in it in one way shape or form you know I, I really do because it's hard to get him even to go to a track anymore yeah no and, and that's you know, I, you know I, I, I took like a like a two or three year break sabbatical. there well I started my own business and stuff and I just got really involved in it and it was like I couldn't I couldn't have anything to do with it. It was like I, I couldn't. I guess it was kind of like maybe an alcoholic feels at a bar. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. You, you watch can't go the, to that bar. Yeah. I, I couldn't watch the races. I couldn't yep. talk about them. I took all the pictures down off the walls. I mean, I really had to do everything to just just put it away. Yep. So that I could focus on my life. And even then, I was still out there. You know, I had a trucking business. Like, you know, one more load. I I could I could buy that transmission for the race car I wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that project was still sitting still in the garage. Sitting there, yeah. And I, I just I could never could never get away from it. And you can't. It doesn't matter what you do, you know. Especially if you've grown up around it and you've been in it all your well, life. And that's, and it's, I, it's hard to do. I figure when I get old enough to get out from behind the wheel, I'll get on a radio and yell at some young punk kid. That's it. <laughs> well, I mean, look at the old guys out there, though. And this has been. We've always had this. I mean, you got Red Farmer out there still running. Still going. Jack Duffy down in Florida. Jack Duffy. Yeah. Uh, um, what's it? Uh, 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 Hilton. Jane, um, James. James. Is it James Hilton? James Hilton. Arca guy. He's like seventy. <laughs> yeah, he's like 90 years old. Yeah. He's, he's still going. He's though. still going. Yeah. Well, you know, look at Sammy Swindell and Steve Kinzer. Yeah. yeah they they're in there. their mid-50s. Right. And they're out there hammering these still kids. Still kicking ass. Yeah. You know, they're hammering these yeah. kids, you know. So do, do we need to quit when we're 45, 50? No, I don't think so. Eh. Brett Favre no. doesn't seem to accept that either. It, yeah, well, I, well, yeah, here we go. He's mid-40s. 
as you feel. I agree. And, and I mean, I you agree. know, look at that sport. There's a guy, you know, that has you know several horrific crashes every time he hits the racetrack. You know. <laughs> Being a quarterback in the NFL is like being a bullseye at a target range. Yeah. That's a punishing lifestyle. That's a, yeah. Most guys don't make it past the mid-30s. Yeah, and he's, what, 42, 43 yeah. now, I think, and, and still rolling? Still David old. Pearson came out of retirement and ran dirt and won, like, 14 out of the 15 races in Carolina. Um, uh, Farmer. Well, we already said him. Uh, uh, Reutemann. Old man Rudiman's still running. Buzzy Rudiman, yeah, Fuzzy, uh, yeah, Buzzy. Buzz, Buzzy's, yeah. Buzzy Rudiman's Buzzy's still running. Buzzy's back in time, CA cars or something down there in Florida, and winning. And winning. <laughs> you know, it's so... It just takes longer to get in and out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know. you got to put that cutout on the door at some point, I guess. <laughs> by, by the way, Trevor would have probably called in, except he's busy playing. I racing? Yep. Oh, get online and dump him for me. <laughs> <laughs> So. Uh, I, was, I was talking to Wayne, too, while I was off to the side. Kenny Schrader, another prime example. Still going. Yeah. He's whipping butt and modifieds yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So, Kenny Wallace, well, he's he's probably our age. I think Kenny's closer to our age than he is. Probably, yeah, he's in his 40s, I guess. Yeah, yeah, boy, did he get a booster this year with that new ride. He's done that really well with that ride, hasn't he? Yeah. I have, For years and years, I was like, man, he's got to hang it up. He's just another one of them Wallace got in on Rusty's name, but man, he's finishing the top. Nice. He's a talented guy. He just never got the break, and it's just, you know, there's, there's Dan, you know what he did, didn't you? Out there. I have no idea what he did. <laughs> he told them, he said he would not accept a paycheck to put it back into the cars so he could run top ten every race. He would not, he didn't, he, he turned down his paycheck. He says, I got the same contract. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, that's pretty cool, though, well, you know. I mean, him, he he a, wants to run well. Yeah. Channel and whoever happens to be covering well, he's got his probably, day job. But, so he's, he's paying the mortgage, he's got food on yeah. the table, and he wants to race. It's his passion, he loves to do it. Yep. So you so, take a team that's not, not as well funded, and you, you fund it with what fund your, it a little bit more and, would and be. make it roll. Right. So, and we, I got a friend, we got a friend that works down there with him. He's an engineer down there on Kenny Wallace's team. Yeah, I mean, man, he's running really really good so i mean you can just tell the difference in equipment from where he was he is now i mean it's just it's ridiculous it's crazy well kudos to him keep digging yeah god bless him keep so going. that's what i gotta say they keep on digging in this deal that's it that's it are we ready to get out of here i really got a long night tonight yeah, you guys take it easy. I, I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, let's do it again next week. We will do it here soon. We'll, yeah, next week. We can do it next week. All right, cool, guys. Good All right, Dan. See you, fellas. Thanks. Take care, bud. Nice Bye. talking to you. All right, last touch. You got a bunch of scribbles and uh, dirt. I, I wouldn't have any issues to running dirt, but you're not going to transfer a lot of asphalt guys over. It's just not going to happen. Ah, uh, why? Why now? Why do a lot of the why do a lot of guys wind up on dirt? Because they can't turn left real well. Well, no, no that ain't necessarily well, no. true. Why did I wind up on dirt? Why did Brett affordability? Hamilton, yeah, I couldn't afford the asphalt tires anymore. Brett Hamilton, you know, he's been asked a question: When are you coming back to asphalt, Brett? And he's, when, when when the tire bill comes down. Well, and that was that was a quote. Loves dirt, very yeah. successful. Brett's a five-time Rolling Thunder modified champion, six-time modified. Asphalt. Yeah, well, he was uh, winning it. Yeah, that's blacktop. Something made him leave Blacktop, and it probably wasn't because he wasn't having fun anymore. He was very successful at it, and it was probably and, because and he just said, got too yeah, damn expensive. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's. I wouldn't rule it out. I would not rule it out. Uh, I just got a message from one of the guys that runs upstate New York, uh, uh, and he says he runs a, a right rear tire for uh, six to seven races, and then it gets slick. He's got to put a new one on. Yeah. Well, see, there you Six go. Six to seven. Now, granted, they're well, running. If it's a slick, it runs really good, better. They run, well, from what I understand, when you put a new one on, you're kind of screwed. You need to wear it in a little bit. Shaving tires. I can see it already. But you know what? And when I ran that class up there, I ran a couple of races up there, and we would shave the tires and run four races. And I don't, I don't recall ever going, hmm, we got to take that off. It's worn out. These are the S groove tires, aren't they? Uh, well, actually, that was uh, back in that day. That was the American Racer. Uh, IMCA spec G60. Yeah. This is the Hoosier version, but it's uh, apparently they're having the same, 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 uh, same. Why can uh, we uh, same results with it? I'm and, and I, we got to say this: we're not knocking Langley. No, this we're is not. Nothing against and, Langley or any other track. And Langley, we're no, saying is, we need that to tire keep rule in out that there tire. is not really Langley's call. That's what the guys voted on. 
Exactly. I wasn't yeah, one of the yeah. guys that voted on it, but I got outvoted. Well, if you're going to put those tires on, and, and one thing I will say is when they put these votes out there, it should be drivers and owners. I see too many people involved that don't own cars, don't drive cars, and probably don't even pay their damn way to get in at a racetrack because somebody else is paying it, and they're in there making decisions on what the teams spend. Well, if he's got to come out here with new tires, he's got to run them 75 laps and then put them on the left side and then put two new ones on it. Oh, my God. I need an accountant to keep track of my tires. Yeah. And you don't even own a car. Are you crazy? Who, why are you even in a meeting? I, I and, and I'm like you. Put them on a hard-ass tire, that 3602 would be a perfect tire. Let them do whatever they want. They're uh, only going to be able to soak it so much. Even if, if they do. If so, honestly, if soap becomes a problem, you put a durometer rule on them. Yeah. That's what they do down in Florida for speed weeks. If it doesn't make the durometer rule, you're out. No matter what. Sorry, that's it. 45, I think, is the number down there. I don't know what it would be on this tire, but we'll, we'll learn that. It's going to have to be a learning curve. And I know <laughs> I put this out to, I think, 40 people. I got about 20 that accepted. There's about eight saying maybe. And there's a lot of silent people that I'm sure are sitting back reading this. And, and looking and going, at the stuff. Hmm. Speak your piece. If you want to be involved in this, if you want to drop the price of stuff down, get involved. Be part of it. Yep. Don't sit back and wait for everybody else to do it and then join in. Realistically, to do this, you're talking about buying one set of tires and bringing your car as is to a track that will have us. Yep. That's it. Four tires. That's all you got to do. You're going to do that anyway. It's just a different tire. Buy the tires. Jump on board. Let's approach a promoter. And talk about it. Oh, speaking of which, promoters, I got a call from uh, Franklin County on the way out. They're having one of their big grab bag tire races. <clears throat> you pay 160 bucks. <clears throat> you pick a number. You get a stack of tires. You put them on a the car, and you race for a thousand to win. October 29th. Might have to find. And it may be in conjunction with the Rolling Thunder guys to, because they had a. Uh, date at North Wilkesboro that has been canceled. Canceled because of the so closing they, back down. We need that big end of race year, and Franklin County, I think, is going to be the place to do it. Okay. And uh, it's a tennis tire. It's a, it's a used late model tire, which we went out and ran on. And honestly, the damn things handled better than, than new eight inch. It was it, it ran. They ran pretty good. I mean, the car had a good feel to it, and the tires were. I mean, they're used, but they're in good shape. I mean, it was Did you run the blue car? Yeah. Okay. Was it wasn't there um, some racing done a while back where the guys actually went out? and got old late model tires to run on. That's well, what you're talking about. The Rolling Thunder Modified Tour used to get the Hooters Pro Cup tires or something like that when they ran at Southampton, I'd say, I want to say. And I might be a little screwed up on the facts there, but I know they had used tires from a series and they ran them at a track. And I'm pretty sure it was Hooters and uh, South uh, Southampton, which was a great deal. It was cheap. The guys ran on them. They, they, it was good. It was good for everybody. You know, who just got rid of a bunch of used tires and Rolling Thunder guys got a bunch of cheap tires. And, you know, and that's, that's the biggest thing, especially for, like, Rolling Thunder where they're touring all over the place. You know, you got to spend $300 in gas to get to the racetrack. Yeah. Then $500 for tires or even 250 if it's a two-tire race. You're running for back gate, it pays maybe 500 to win. I thought you, um... It's a horrible loss, no matter what you do. Didn't you, um, uh, how should I say it, boycott a certain division? We didn't, uh, we didn't necessarily boycott it, but we decided not to run it because we had so many other options here. Between South Boston, Langley, and South Side. You had uh, enough options. I had three tracks right here that I could run. There was a lot less travel. It was more economically feasible with a lot more racing to do yeah. as opposed to chasing it all over creation. All right. Let's get out of here. Good night, right. everyone. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold no, on. no, no, no. No, 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 no. We're going. We started talking modified, so I got a modified driver that said he's calling in. Let's talk racing. Hey, it's Trevor Edwards. Hey! <laughs> you know who this is? Huh? Get, come on, guess who this is. You know me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll see you this weekend. It's Joe Scarborough. How you doing, buddy? How you doing, buddy? Not too bad. Not too bad. Y'all ready to go? Oh, yeah. We're talking. I want to get your two cents on this real quick. Talking about running uh, modifieds. On a reusable tire, the G60 Hoosier, something you can run probably three or four races. Yay or nay? I mean, as long as you can regulate people having to run in two or three races, it's okay, but the tires we run Rolling Thunder are two or three races, but when you put someone else puts the tires on, 
you have to put tires on because automatically three or four ten. Well, exactly. That's it. That's it. And and this tire is, from what I understand, your first night out on it is a disadvantage. You need to probably that third or fourth run on those tires is the peak. Oh, get cycles through it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As you wear it in, it tends to get better, and then it tends to fade back out. But I mean, I know people running them, you know, five, six races. And I mean, granted, that number will probably be cut in half for the length of the Rolling Thunder races. You may only get three or four races out of them because they're twice the length. But your, your second, third race on those tires would probably be the ideal match on them. Right. The only thing we could, the only thing you could do is try them. Well, and that's it. I'm just trying to get enough people together to buy four of these things. And approach a track about having a race. You gonna tell them the rest of it about pump, the, using regular pump gas instead of. Well, that was my other thing was if we did, and this is all on, on Facebook. I, I put a little uh, post out on it, but uh, my other thing was to reduce the, the expense of fuel. If you ran pump gas, being ninety three octane and lower, you would be allowed a four barrel and a weight break. Penny, for your thoughts on that one. That'd be great. I mean, four barrel makes you drive it more. I think the two barrel is kind of limited in the power. So I mean, I always like having more horsepower. Four barrel more response of everything. I well, mean, with tires you'd have to have like a serial code deal where you could scan tires or a stamp deal that no one else can get. You know well, what I mean? The, the tires would just be the the Hoosier G60. It's like the IMCA spec tire. Yeah, well, and it would be get your own, bring them in. Maybe we put a durometer rule on them if the soak seems to be getting out of control. Oh, there's soaks out there these days though that don't even change durometers. I know people that are using them at Lake Erie. Well, true, but even I mean, even at that, if you, soak's cheap, it's cheaper than tires. Oh yeah, I mean it'd be a lot easier. We don't have that many races in Rolling Thunder this year, so I'd love to have a different, like a different series go run every now and then. Yeah, I, I mean I think it's I, I think it's definitely worth a shot. Like I said, I'm just trying to get enough teams together that are willing to agree to do this. Because I think once we get probably 10 teams together, we can approach pretty much any speedway and tell them we'll go in and run for back gate purses. And if you're not buying tires every week, that $500, $400 to win is a pretty damn good purse. Yeah. I mean, the whole deal with the Rolling Thunder deal is it's so expensive, you don't make anything out of it, you usually lose money. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, I mean, racing's always going to be pretty much a losing sport, I guess, but we can reduce how much you lose. If you don't have to spend $150 in gas in a race car and $500 in tires on it, you can race for $350 or $400 to win and actually cover a good amount, if not all, of your expenses, depending on the distance to the track. Exactly. And that's what I'm trying to bring back. And I think if we did that, we'd see a lot of these cars that don't run anymore come out of the mothballs. Exactly. Because only all these people are doing it for fun and they can't afford to run every weekend because it's too expensive, really. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly, and and realistically, teams, you you got a you know one of the front running teams, one of what what one of what I would call the better funded teams, the tires you took off and deemed unusable, one of these other teams could probably put on a race car and run for two or three weeks. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the Rolling Thunder tires. It's just if someone else puts a set on, you have to put another one on. Well, that's it. I mean, it's a very good tire, performs very well, but it's realistically, you're going to buy tires from Motor Mile, aren't you? Oh, yeah, everybody is. And you bet I am, too. And we all want to win. I mean, exactly. I have gone to win, really. Yeah, and, and that's, that's just the, the, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Where with this tire, if it does what everybody says it does... Uh, It'll probably be a disadvantage to yeah, put new putting, tires on. Yeah, putting new tires on in the car. I might be doing donuts in the uh, industrial park trying to wear them in. Wear them in, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, I take it down the road a few times. Oh, yeah, I know you would. <laughs> Driving it down in Kentucky lanes, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what else has been going on with you, Trevor? I've uh, just been working on the race on one super late. We're thinking about running South Boston August 20th and Hickory. Uh, we were really fast the other day at Hickory, so, I mean, we're kind of optimistic about that race. South Boston's kind of a iffy kind of deal if we're going to run it or not. And then the modifieds, we've been running real good. I mean, first race, we let out every lap. Second race, you ran second every lap. So, I mean, we're right there. We're, we definitely picked up from what we were last year. Good. I'm sorry to hear that because we've fallen off. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's had his string of bad luck this year. I, hopefully, you got rid of it all this year. Ah, uh, Yeah, it's, it's that. Uh, and, and improve for next year. What do they year? call that after you, you know, what, what do they call that season after you win the Super Bowl? Sucky season. Is that the lousy one? Yeah, that's what we got going on. Sucky yeah. season. We're yeah. not going to make the playoffs this year. But Sophomore season. If there was a draft choice, we'd get first. <laughs> I 
coming into the year, we thought we. Oh, we lost you. What happened? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's, that's Hello, Trevor. Trevor. Yeah. Oh, hey, you're back. There you go. We lost you for a minute. Oh. Must be on that cell phone. Yeah, I'm on the cell phone because I was playing iRacer racer when he chased me, and I was actually in the middle of a race. Did you win? You know, you know you're not supposed to drive and talk on the phone? I wasn't talking on the phone. I wasn't texting or driving or nothing. I was doing all the right things, just focusing on the race. And yeah, there you go. Surprise! <laughs> I kill him on there. Yeah, I was talking to your dad. He said, "Yeah, he won't even answer me if he's eye racing. He's he's probably doing that. That's why I can't get a hold of him." <laughs> that was it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much all I do now. I mean, I come home from work, take a shower, and get on eye racing and play around, have fun. Oh goodness! We'll have to get uh, Steve Durbin to. to Get up with you, do some racing with you. All right. So, what time are you? Uh, what What time are you guys heading out the motor mile on uh, Saturday? Uh, we're gonna be out there whenever gates open. I mean, I don't know. I just kind of get show up and drive, really. Oh yeah, yeah. It takes me a while to get rough. the dirt out from under my nails. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, work my, I work my tail off on this super late model. We come over and work on the modifieds, but when it comes to race day, they just wake me up. I get in the truck and head to the racetrack. Yeah, that must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Rough y'all life. Gonna be, y'all going to be coming up to Langley? No, we don't have any Langley races this year. I think we are gonna we might come up there and run a weekly show or something. I thought the Southern Modified were coming out to Langley this year. No. Southern modified. Southern, not the Rolling Thunder. Not oh. the Rolling Thunder. That's the, the man. Ground pounders. Yeah. Okay. I wish we would, because we were fast there last year. Yeah, you were. You were. You were. You were real, real quick. You, what, you lost a clutch or something, I think, right? First race of the year, we blew up on lap two of practice, and then we barely lost the pole to Joe. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you. Broke a clutch on the start. I, after I looked back the at it. last pole I had, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. It, it was actually going away and qualifying. I just thought I was buzzing my tires because that's what it sounded like. And then the race began, and it was kind of the inexperience showing last year. Now I know what a clutch feels like. Probably feels a lot better than snapping a rear in half. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that very much. Jo- Joe has the best, what do we call it? Save? The best save of the year. Had had the... The, the differential snapped in half the going differ- into one on the first lap. And it turned, not left, slap right it in locked, front of the whole field. It locked up the right rear. Oh, that was awesome, I bet. Good. On, on the start, and we were nose to tail from first all the way back to 20th. Please tell me you had a GoPro or something in there. No, no, <laughs> no. He needed one though. It, it would have been good. All the nightmares of that are so, right in my head. Yeah, his shorts did. The car. I want to see the view of Joe's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> they were white. I will know. I will tell you that. They were closed. Were you kidding? <laughs> Afterwards, he did not have white shorts on anymore. That's no, no. I didn't hit anything, but I still had an accident. <laughs> and, and everybody and everybody behind them probably had. Well, they were at least saying it. I know that. I'm designing a new line of tear offs now. <laughs> they don't go on the helmet. They don't go on the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. <laughs> and that 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 was the first of many a restarts that night. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we I think it took five times yeah, to get started five. that night. Yeah, which was yeah. cool though. The guys in front of me crashed much worse than I did. I, I just, and, and I kept going forward. I just spun out of the way. Got one little ding in the Nerf bar, and they they, they piled them up into the fence. And you started like you were on the inside, so third or fifth. Uh, I think I was like fourth row inside, and Seven. the car in front of me tried to go three wide into the row in front of him, and that didn't work out well. So my spinning, I think, slowed everybody down from turning that what ended up being a three-car yeah, three melee, one-car crash into a massive mess. And I think on that next restart, that same guy tried to make it three wide again oh. and caused a melee. Did, didn't learn anything from the first time. And we no. know who we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, patience. Patience is a virtue. Well, that's a flower. That's what they think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Right, I got a long right. trip hey, Trevor, tonight. Trevor. Trevor. For, for calling up. Go ahead and do a quick shout out to your sponsors. We don't want you to call in and not be able to do that. <laughs> I just want to thank Howell Racing Chassis and McGonna Go Motors for helping me out in the uh, Super Late and the Modified Steel Rubber products, too. And check out Track Atlas. They help you out. It's like a uh, Wikipedia for track. It's a pretty cool deal. Cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Very good. Very good. And send uh, send my regards to, to Pop and Kevin and the whole gang out there, right? 
I will. And then, uh, actually, this weekend at Motor Mile, if anybody from Bradford, Virginia is listening, they are actually letting anybody in to the track free if you have a, if you can prove that you're a firefighter. We got hooked up with USSD, and they kind of, they set that whole deal up. It's a pretty cool deal. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, That's yeah great. I heard, I heard yeah. there was something going on with you and the firefighter stuff. Um, we're, actually gonna have, we're gonna have two of them there with us. We're gonna have two at each track we go to, actually come around, and just kind of hang out with us and feel what it is to be like a race car driver. And then I'm gonna go to a couple of firefighting houses or whatever they're called, uh, and just kind of hang out with them and see what they do. So it'd be a pretty cool deal. Yeah, yeah. real cool. Good yeah, deal. one of our earlier guests was the one telling us about was Dan Brody. Oh, Dan. Dan the man. <laughs> that guy. That guy. <laughs> 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 All right, Tony. I'm going to ask you about that on Saturday. I got a feeling there's a story behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story. You can have to call me on that one. Uh, All right, Trevor, yeah. take care. Be good, buddy. All right, see ya. Thanks for letting me call in. All, All right, right, man. man. Take care. Bye bye. Have a good night. Bye. So, that was pretty cool. Let's see. What do we got set up here? Uh, Are we saying good night? Actually, I have close out but you can say good night good night, good night everybody Bye. do a close out hey guys i'm daytona 500 winner trevor bain and thank you for watching let's talk racing let's talk racing is brought to you by pc doctors computer sales and services this doctor still makes house calls and also hampton incredible tees and signs both located at 1248 north king street in hampton virginia